Perfect. All right, so um, let's see. Um, the first, does anyone have anything pressing that they wanted to bring up before we just start on the agenda? Nope. Nope. All right. Um, so I'm going to, I guess the first question that I had was, um, does anyone feel like there's anything in the first, in the introduction or first chapter that they feel like flew went by over their head or that was um, particularly difficult that you ran into problems with? Um, I guess I'll, I'll jump in. Um, to be honest, I, I, I'm still working through that first chapter. I just busted open the uh, um, HDL syntax stuff, so I'm a little behind. Um, so I don't know how much I have to contribute, so I'll try and glean as much as I can from you guys. All right. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't, like, conceptually there wasn't anything that seemed too difficult, just, like, from reading through it. So I don't know if that's distinct from actually imp implementing the uh, chips or if that's a separate uh, separate discussion for later. But like all the concepts seem pretty 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 clear and pretty well uh, pretty well presented. So so far so good. Yeah, it was a little bit for me at least a little bit of a throwback to um, <laughs> the feeling of being in university, except that I wasn't panicking the whole time because I wasn't going to be graded. Um, but yeah, it, it seemed at least the, the Boolean logic kind of felt right at home. Um, although I did have, I did think that like, um, even though it made sense to me conceptually, I felt like there was a little bit of a conceptual gap when I went to implement the OR gate um, using only NAND gates. For whatever reason, I, I mean, I sat there and I think I just tried a whole bunch of different um, kind of random variations just trying to figure out a way to make the truth tables work. But even when I found a solution, it didn't feel like it made sense to me. Like even now, if I look at it and it's, you know, it's like these three NAND gates, two of them that feed into the third one, I, I still don't really conceptually, it doesn't make sense to me why it works. I, I can see the truth tables, how they work out, but I, it doesn't like, I can't think about how to make one of those from scratch other than memorizing it. Yeah, yeah, the OR gate was definitely the one, for whatever reason, uh, that I had the hardest time wrapping my mind around. But it took me probably this, like, this, the longest amount of time to like, do it because I just sat there like, how does this work? How does it work? And they even like tell you in the text, like, it's a NAND and another NAND, and then you wrap those in a NAND. And I'm like, what? So that still didn't <laughs> make sense. And I finally had to like, go look at the Wikipedia page where they had like, a diagram of the NAND gates. And from that point, as I've like stepped through it gate by gate, I'm like, okay, I think I understand how that works. But that was last night, and then today, like driving home, I was like trying to think about it again, and I still, it still took me like, it's really, it's, it just must be counterintuitive or something. I, it took me a while to step through it again. Granted, I was driving, so I had to focus on some other things too. But it, it took some time, like reprocess that chip all over again. It's weird. The ore is a weird one. Yeah, it was so weird because I like. I even tried thinking, like, well, what if I went from the other side if I tried to make an AND gate out of NOR gates? Um, and I couldn't figure that out either. It's like, it just seems conceptually, for whatever reason, in my brain, an AND operation and an OR operation are, like, totally, totally opposite of each other almost. And I don't understand how you can combine multiple ORs to make an AND. It just doesn't make sense. Like, I know it does work, obviously, but I, I just can't conceptualize it. I really liked when I could see the diagrams. When I could see the diagram, I could understand it a whole lot better. I don't know. It must be something visual for me. Like it just, it, like you were saying, the throwback to like going to college, taking that first hardware class, saying what the heck's going on. <laughs> but the picture, like seeing the picture and the truth table, really, really helped me to look at it. And I'm still working on implementing the the gates, but. Uh, yeah, like looking at some of them when they're when the book was describing, hey, try and make this XOR gate, and I was like, huh? Show me the picture. <laughs> oh, the picture makes sense. Okay, so I don't know. Maybe I have to like, like uh, draw out the gates as I'm doing the uh, 
I, I draw out, uh, here's my outputs, I need one output, here's my inputs, and then just like throw some gates down and see, just like, you know, paper pencil type thing. That, that seems to help me the best when I can just look at a picture instead of just the truth table. Hmm. That makes a lot of sense. I for sure use that technique um, on some of the other gates. That A couple of the other ones that gave me problems were the, the DMUX gates. Like, for whatever reason, a MUX gate makes a lot of sense to my brain, but a DMUX was really confusing me. Um, and so on any of those um, that I kind of had problems with, I definitely spent more time drawing it on a piece of paper and, like, you know, drawing a MUX and then trying to think about what it, look, what it would look like in reverse and sort of graphically thinking about a reversal made it easier conceptually for me. Um, and then it was pretty easy to translate that down into the HDL. So I used that on some of the other problems that I ran into, but but I, even then, I, I I don't know, the NAND gate, turning NAND gates into ORs, even graphically, was still a hurdle for me. Yeah, the hardest, the hardest, like, well, after the OR, the next hardest for me was actually the reverse of yours. The MUX, the multiplexer was relatively easy. No, that was a hard one. It was the demultiplexer that was like, oh, this this makes sense. It was the multiplexer that was, like, really tricky. And my first solution just totally sucked. And it was, like, tons of ands and crazy stuff because I, like, had to just break down when I wrote it. They had that suggestion, or they made that remark earlier in the chapter about how you could, like, basically write everything as a combination of uh, ands and ors and nots. So I just looked for the, I looked at the truth table for the multiplexer and said, okay, here's the four results. And I made, like, these crappy, like, expressions and then literally translated all of those into the gates I built. And it sucked. It was, like, totally unwieldy. So after a while, when I finally had, like, thawed my brain out, it was like, cranking on it, I was able to come back and kind of like refine it more, but man, it was a trap. It was, it was a trip. Uh, um, Dan, do you want by any chance, do you want to show the HDL you have for that? Because I think mine is actually still the crufty version of what you're explaining. It's Mine's just kind of a whole bunch of knots, hands, and oars, and yeah. I tried to kind of group them together, but it looks still pretty kludgy to me. Well, I'll pull up what I got. Maybe, like, I'm kidding myself. Mine's still kludgy, but I'm happy to <laughs> happy to pull it up. Let's, uh... Oh, right. Okay. So, let's see. I need to do screen share, I guess. Right? Yeah, this works. Uh, for me, it's kind of up near the top left. If you hover near the left side, the bar kind of slides over. Ah, yeah, there we go. Okay. Screen share. Let's do desktop. Okay. Can everybody see that? I'm going to pull this back onto the right desktop. So that's what I wound up with in the end. But it started off super gnarly. I oh, wish that's... Yeah, that's, that's Sorry, way cleaner than mine. Sorry, go ahead. Explain. No, I don't really have anything to say. It's just like before, so like I started off with something that was like, so it was like A and B, uh, A and B and like not S, or A and not B and not S, or, and then like the, the B equivalents of this, so it was like not A and B and uh, S in this case. And then not A, or sorry, A and B and S. We're like, that was all the positive, all the ones, those are the four ones in the output hand of the truth table. And so I translated them into this thing, and then I started doing like this crazy thing where I was like, <laughs> when I was trying to clean it up, I was like, oh, I can like factor this out. It's, you know, I can factor the S out of here, sort of, in a weird kind of like arithmetical thing. It's like that factors out kind of. If you can see, like, obviously the mathematical rules aren't the same, but that's kind of the process I was going through. And then I was like, oh, it doesn't make sense to have A and not A. Then that means, like, the A might as well not be there. So you just end up with this case where it's just, like, B and S. And then you do a similar reduction on the other side, and you can get it pretty simple. So that was sort of the thought process that I was working through when I was doing that. Anyway, that, that helped me, but... 
I don't know if this is legit mathematics or not. Probably <laughs> not. Probably totally not. <laughs> hey, if the chip works. Yeah. Pass the tests. <laughs> Oh, can I, by the way, say that that's actually, like, my favorite part of working through this through the, in, a, in a book format is that I wish someone else could write my tests all day, every day. That's, like, amazing. <laughs> all I actually have to do is make them pass. I don't have to write the tests or try to organize them or make them good. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah, it's cool. It's great. So I think I went through a somewhat similar format, but I, um, I didn't... I mean, I so in all honesty, I saw the section of the book like I was reading straight through the chapters. When I got to the part about um, trying to reduce Boolean expressions, I kind of lost focus at that point and was just like, I need to start writing some code. And so I didn't really read that part very well. But um, but I didn't simplify it as much as you. So let me actually I'll pull mine up here real quick, um, and hopefully this doesn't look terrible. Can you guys see that? Uh, not yet. Let me see. Did I not do this? Oh, there we go. Start screen share. Oh. All right. Is that coming through? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so this looks, I'm assuming that this is sort of the gnarly version of what you're explaining, Dan. Yeah, but, it looks um, familiar. Yeah, so this is, like, for sure kind of that find all the possible ones, outputs, and then just or those all together. And so it's like you end up, this is the final or here, but it's really like this or along with that or get or together, uh, or rather this final and here and this final and here end up in this or, and that's your final output. Um, and I, I didn't see the, uh, like, the, oh, turn off the screen share. I didn't, I didn't see the part uh, or the simplification, that final one you showed of, oh, there's no reason to keep an A and a not A in the same side of the equation if we're thinking of it that way. Yeah, so. yeah. No, it makes, makes sense, yeah. Um, was there anything else that you guys found that was um, helpful as you were trying to work through any of the harder problems where um, any, like, strategies that you took or things that you tried to do? No, I just I've already shown all my tricks. I'm out. That was that was it. <laughs> it was nice on some of like the more brute force ones, like the 16-bit things. Or, like I got really familiar with some of the editor macros, figuring out how to just, like, make the search and replace on like 15 other lines after the first one. That's funny. I actually the same thing on the on uh, the 16-bit and. I think that was the first time that I actually finally figured out like, okay, seriously, how do I do macros in Sublime? <laughs> and actually did one. Um, so the only other thing that I kind of tried to experiment with that might be worth showing is um, on the on the kind of higher level gates. I tried to um, be like put a constraint on myself that I would have to implement them using my own gates, not the primitives. And so um, so for example, let's see, like the mux eight way sixteen HDL. This guy, so I, I tried as much as I could to, like, only make this one out of mux four ways. I couldn't think of a way to only do mux four ways, without being, stupid, but um, but I tried to do that as much as possible, and it it seemed helpful once I was able to, try to layer the abstractions on top of each other. I don't know if you guys found that same thing. You know, I was trying to do that. Actually, I was like, I don't. I want to express these in the uh, in as high level as possible. But for some reason, it never crossed my mind to do the eight way with the four ways. I just like contented myself with the regular mugs. Man, now I really want to go try it with the the four ways. Good idea. But yeah, um, I didn't get as far as you did, but I did find that like a very similar helpful approach to try and do that as the. Uh, like express the higher level chips in as in as high level chip as possible. Yeah, kind of try to keep the the number of chips in any one given HDL file to a minimum by trying to use higher level chips. Yeah. It made me wonder if I'm as conscientious of that in my own code, or if I just play with active record objects all day long every day and never abstract them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Um, so I have just a couple final questions, um, unless someone else wants to pipe in with some more. Um, but my first question was kind of pacing-wise, as a group, do we feel like one chapter a week, is that going to kind of work for people, or do you feel like that's too much? I think it kind of depends, in my opinion. Like, I, I, uh, like, I think that if I had started, so I was bad, I didn't start until, like, today, and so that's why I'm still working on the gates. But I think it, it might just depend on what the content of the chapter is. Like, I haven't looked ahead yet to see what the future holds. But right now, yeah, a, a chapter a week seems pretty good for me. Yeah, I'd, I'd second that. Like, I I was almost as bad as you. I, I started, like, last night. So I got it all done in, like, one admittedly late night. Um, so I think this time, if I'm smart about it and actually, like, pace myself over the course of a week, I won't, like, burn out. So I'd like to see how one more chapter goes. If they get, like, if they get substantially more difficult, maybe we'll need to slow down, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay, yeah, I'm good with keeping going. I mean, I'm I'm behind, but but that's just procrastination and whatnot. So I say we just keep going like this, and then if uh, people can just kind of put up a flag if it gets if it gets a little too you know quick, we can just put something kind of in the post something in the um, Google whatever page or whatever the heck they call it. I don't use Google Plus, so <laughs> <laughs> does anybody? <laughs> Other than for Other than for this? meetings. <laughs> yes. That's about it. That's about it. Um, so yeah, I I think I'm kind of in the same opinion. I just think let's just try to keep going, and we'll kind of that's our best guess for next week is try to cover one chapter. But um, but let's just post as we go. So if anyone gets partway into it and feels like wow, this week is a lot more work than last week, then just post a comment on the the hangout page for the next week. I'll. I'll try to keep getting them up a week in advance um, so that the next week one is up by tomorrow. And that way, if we start to run into problems where it's feeling too much too fast, then just start posting and talking about it. Um, and the, the last question I had on my list was, I'm curious about a possible change of format. So um, I was thinking about if this was like an in-person group, I actually think I'd get more out of it by trying to like pair with the other people in the group to solve the project, rather than coming to the study group with the project already done. Um, and so I was considering the idea of like, what if we everyone tries to do the reading ahead of time and maybe get some sort of a start on that week's project, but not necessarily be done with it. And that way, when we come, um, maybe we could kind of start off in a text, uh, like in a group chat, and just get that going first, and then. If you find someone who's kind of near the same level as you, just start a smaller video chat with just a few, like a smaller number of people, and work together towards trying to come up with a solution. Um, so I don't know. That seems different and harder to keep on a schedule, but I kind of just I think I would get more value out of solving the problems with another person. Uh, that'd be cool, but I know that. Well, for me personally, like a lot of a lot of the folks here, like the, this is the Utah County Ruby guys, and I'm up in like Davis County. So the in-person thing won't necessarily work, but like I, I definitely open for like remote pairing or something on it would be would be super cool. But I kind of like the fact that it's a Google Hangout and it's like 9:30 on a Wednesday. It's it's actually pretty easy to cram into my schedule. So for selfish reasons, I like the current format. But if we want to augment that in some way, that's totally cool. Yeah, so I was hoping to do the pairing on like another Google Hangout, um, but my only concern doing that was just that if we get, you know, five or six people into a single Google Hangout, then it doesn't really seem like it's pairing anymore. Like it's harder to look at someone else's screen if there's five other screens being shared. Um, so I thought maybe we'd do like an online, um, and I don't even know if this is possible. So maybe I'll experiment a little bit this week, and I'll post if I find a good way to do it. But I thought. Maybe we'd start out in kind of a group chat format and start talking, and whoever kind of you know just pair up that way and smart start multiple smaller video chats um, that would kind of spawn out of the group chat and say like okay let's let's go pair you know find someone who's at near the same point in the product as you and go pair together and make some progress and then come back into the group chat to discuss at the end I don't know just an idea. Yeah, that's cool. There was um, one thing that I'm using 
uh, in my company. Like when when we do work from home days, we'll use uh, um, a program called Screen Hero, and it works out really well. You're able to interact. I don't know if you guys have used it, but um, it's I, I really really like it, and so it it really helps a lot. Like you're able to interact on one person's screen, both of you, no matter where you're at. So you can type, you can mouse click, you can do everything looking at someone else's screen. But it, so it's really helpful for me when I, because I've done multiple pair programming activities with another guy, completely not in the same physical area. But it's been really, 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 really helpful to me. Um, do you know is there a screen here? I'm assuming it's a paid product. No, it's free. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, all right, so maybe I'll try and play around with that. If I, I might actually just ping one or two of you. Um, Dave, if you have some experience with that, maybe I'll try and ping you. And another night after kids are asleep or something like that, maybe we can spend 10 minutes just trying to kind of goof around and see if that's something. The only thing I don't really know how to how to make work is the, like, start in a large... Like, I want to encourage more people to be participating in the study group, mm -hmm. but... Um, remote pairing with many people just doesn't seem feasible to me. So I'm trying to think of some sort of format that's like, hey, let's all get together, talk about things for 10 minutes, and then find someone in the group who's at a similar place in the project, pair for maybe triples or something smaller like that, and you know get some work done and kind of learn from each other, and then go back to the group chat at the end. That's that's something that's really easy to do in person, and I want to find a way to do something like that online as well. For the same reasons that Dan mentioned, I like going to another UREG night is probably just not in the cards um, due to the fact that I'm in charge of putting the boys to sleep in my house. And uh, so meeting up after kids are asleep and without leaving the house is, a, is totally possible, whereas an in-person meeting is much less possible for me. Uh, I think it, it sounds like a good thing to try and experiment with, and I think I think we can make it work, so it's totally worth a shot. We would do like an initial hangout, and we'll figure it out from there. Okay. All right, well, let's plan on... Um, does anyone else have anything else I should say before we, before we split? Um, quick question on the, the study material. You guys have mentioned a few times the book. Um, are you just... You're just pulling the, <clears throat> the PDFs online? You're not actually... I mean, I know that there is a book... I just wanted to make sure I'm not missing out on some material that might be in the book that's not on the online PDFs. Did that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I, I know that there's, like, so there's chapters, like, one through six, I think, and the introduction are all on PDFs. But then after that, it, like, doesn't have any links. The last time I looked, anyway, uh, I could be wrong. Interesting. I didn't, um, there's, uh, there's... Links here. Let's see. Yeah, like I'm seeing that chapter seven through thirteen. It's more like, good luck. You better buy the book. Oh, I thought it was good luck. Better buy the book from the beginning. You mean I paid cash money like a chunk <laughs> for online for free? <laughs> we'll just all get a photocopy yours, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, for sure, at least the first two chapters, I started off reading in PDF, waiting for my paper copy to arrive, because I'm one of those paper snobs when it comes to books. Um, and so, yeah, so there was nothing different in the first few links, but I do see that same thing. It looks like after chapter six, the, the PDF links on the website stop. So I don't know if you can get the PDF from somewhere else after that. Um, maybe they just haven't posted them on the website, but... Um, but it, as far as I can tell, there's nothing different between the printed book and the uh, PDFs. Kind of a teaser. they got to make money somehow, right? <laughs> you get your long locked in, you're halfway through, and then <laughs> you realize you got nothing left. So, yeah, it's, it's man to assembler for free and then assembler to Tetris for pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I guess I'll have to buy that book. Good to know. Uh, I got mine on Amazon, a paperback copy. I think it was twenty-five bucks. So. Yeah. Well, I needed it like yesterday. Man, I, I wish I had known that there were free PDFs. So <laughs> like, I couldn't wait for a printed copy to even even two days on Prime. I couldn't wait. So <laughs> I was thinking about like getting a print copy anyway, but 
Oh, man, that, that hurts. I could have totally just gone with PDFs and ordered a print copy and waited. Oh, that's how it goes. See, love you. Yeah. Uh, like, as far as, like, like midweek communication, like, if anyone has any questions, do you want to set up, like, a like a separate mailing list or something? Or how to... What's the best way to do that? Just post questions to you, the UROG list? Um, I think we could use the UROG list. I think that would be pretty legit. Um, although, I did notice, like, uh, Chuck, he posted several comments just on the, on the video page, on the Google Plus, like, Hangout page in advance. Um, and that seemed to work well. And I know that you can, like, reply to replies and things like that on there. Um, so unless, unless someone really hates using Google+, Plus, I would say let's just keep the conversation kind of going there, and that way each week's conversation kind of stays boxed with the, with the video that we have for that week or whatever. Yeah, I agree. That sounds good. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, I'll, um, I'll get, try and get the one up for next week's material. I'll try and get the page up by tomorrow, um, and then we can just kind of discuss in there as we go. Let me know if it, the pacing is too fast or if anyone has any brilliant ideas about how to make some sort of like video chat into remote pairing back into video chat sort of format work. That would be awesome. But otherwise, we'll just kind of wing it next week. Cool. Yep, sounds good. Oh, hey, could we go like uh, go around like and do introductions real quick? Like at the end, like you like a good place for introductions is. I'm Dan. <laughs> Dan Dorman. So up in Kaysville. I don't know. Did you want more information? <laughs> yes, I'm dying for more information. <laughs> All right, uh, I work at Instructure. Uh, I have two twin girls. All right, I'm Mike Reese. I live uh, in Utah Valley in uh, Cedar Hills. I have two boys, a three-year-old and a one-year-old, um, and I work for Money Desktop. Um, Dan, do you know Dwayne Johnson? The Rock? No, I, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's yeah. another Dwayne Johnson that happens to work in structure. <laughs> he and I are old buddies, which is why uh, I asked. But I, I don't yeah. think I know Dwayne. Is he an engineer? Yeah, he's an engineer. I know he's doing Ruby stuff. He told me he was on some smallish team that was kind of trying to spike out some sort of new product that kind of relates to the core, but they're trying to spin it off as kind of a separate service running independently of the, of the main app. So that's all I know. All right. I think I know to which product you're referring, but, man, I guess I just don't know Dwayne. Maybe I know him by sight. Anyway, I will keep an eye out for him. Excellent. Hey, Michael, were you at the uh, Dev Mountain thing last night? I know there was a bunch of guys from Money Desktop there. Um, oh, no, I wasn't. I, uh, I know uh, Brandon went. I don't know who else was there. Um, Brandon spoke, right? Yeah, yeah, I saw him speak. Yeah, no, um, I, I didn't make it last night. Curious. Well, I'll jump in then. Um, I'm Adam Jaycox. I'm in Farmington, so not too far away from you, Dan. I know we've, we've bumped into each other a few times on Front Runner. When I was taking the Front Runner, I had to give that up now that I work in Instructure. Yeah. <laughs> I still get to do that a couple times a week. So. Nice. Um, I work at Saxton Horn. I've been doing Ruby for about a year now. So um, don't have a CS background. So all of this, you know, binary, bitwise, all this kind of stuff is very new to me. So I'm sure I'll, I'll be hitting you guys up for help um, as I keep going through things. Um, and let's see, I have a, a son that's two and one on the way. So. Awesome. Um, I'm Dave Hackett. Uh, I'm in American Fork, in Utah County. And I work at Master Control. So just uh, downstairs from Instructure. Hey, all right. Yeah, but we're not a Ruby shop. I wish with all my heart that we did have Ruby, but... <laughs> Hey, if, if you know, you're already commuting, so <laughs> let me know if you're interested in, <laughs> in applying it in Structure. Yeah, I already know another guy that uh, works in Structure, too, Bracken Mossbacker. I don't know if you know him. Yeah, I know Bracken. Yeah, we, know were Bracken. In, we were in college together. We, we had, like, I don't know, we had a few classes together. He's a riot. He, like, he likes going against the grain. 
Tell the truth, though. That's that's the reason you're not working on a structure. It's bracket. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go work with that. <laughs> Uh, oh, Bracken's great. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. Um, and I have a, a two-year-old son, almost two years old, and a little girl on the way, so about the same as Adam there. Cool. Uh, yeah. Apparently it's all the dads with one to two kids that like to come to late-night study groups on the internet. <laughs> We're lonely. <laughs> we yeah. put the kids down, and we want to get to something else. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Awesome. Well, I totally think, just to read, I don't know if this has been expressed, but if it feels like it's going a little fast, I'd rather slow down and keep the people that really want to participate than, like, speed up and feel like they can't keep up so they drop off. So uh, let's totally try and keep everyone as involved as possible that wants to do this. Mm -hmm. Definitely agree. Um, and obviously there's some a little bit of a balance there, like, you know, we don't want to slow down to the lowest common denominator necessarily if there's lots of people moving faster. Yeah. Um, but there's always the opportunity as well that if that happens and the group kind of bifurcates, then we can do two groups, right? So um, anyway, yeah, let's just we'll keep chatting and just keep the conversation going. So I think that'll it'll kind of normalize and work itself out. And thanks, Dan, for the idea of doing outroductions. I don't, the opposite of introductions. Yeah. Extraductions. <laughs> um, but yeah. So anyone, anyone else have anything before we call it a night? Well, I just want to say thanks, Michael, for putting this all together. I mean, I know I got a million other things going on, but uh, when I first read about this, I've been wanting to get a better understanding of just how everything works underneath, you know, and and so. This is a great opportunity. I appreciate you taking the time to kind of set this up and organize it. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Thanks, Mike. We will all, I'll pass all those things on to Mike Moore, who actually took me to lunch and pitched me the idea of doing the study group, and then I'm and sure... Then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure his, apparently his putting his kids to bedtime routine probably ended sadly tonight, which is why he's not here. But, um, but I'm sure he'll be here in the future. He's super excited about it. Yeah, I'm stoked. This is a really, really cool book. All right, well, yeah, everyone, keep the questions going. Feel free to post in the on the pages, the video, uh, the Hangout pages, and I, I'm happy to answer questions. I'm sure everyone else is happy to pitch in with solutions as well. So um, I think that's it. We'll wrap up for tonight. Cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Oh, hi, Clinton. Is Clinton there? Still connecting, maybe? Fossil alarm. Fossil alarm. All right. Well, good night, guys. Yeah. All right. Have a good, good night, night, Dan. We'll see you.